over the whole course of that summer, you know, I, I don't know the number of days we were activated for 24 hours, but it was significant. It was weeks. And uh, at the time, um, the most impactful thing for me was the Boy Scout Ranch at Little Sioux over in western Iowa. It was one of those days we all felt uh, absolutely devastated because we finally thought we were rounding a curve and then this happened and it was, it was a, a, a mighty blow. It was a devastating blow. I was um, the lead for the Joint Information Center that evening. Um, I think it was around 7 p.m. when that happened. Uh, things were quieting down a little bit. We had provided information for the 5 and 6 o'clock news cycle, so we were taking a bit of a breath before we prepared products for the um, 9 and 10 o'clock newscasts. I had been out here um, I don't know, I think I had come in at maybe 5 that morning or something like that. And so I was actually getting ready to go home about 6.30, 7 o'clock, getting ready to go home. And most, I think the, the intention was that at that point, things had kind of slowed down. The nighttime business wasn't a lot. And if I remember correctly, I think it was just me and Lucinda out here. Um, and there may have been somebody else, but we were kind of, you know, we were just kind of doing the transition. She was going to get ready to kind of, I think, work till like maybe midnight. And... Then we got, you know, there's a tornado warning, and you follow that through, and all of a sudden there's a tornado on the ground. It's at a Boy Scout ranch. And I looked at Joyce, and I said, do we need to go tell the lieutenant governor that we need a governor's proc for that, for that county? And she said, yeah, you better. So I walked up to the executive office, and she and her chief of staff, Matt Unger, were sitting there talking, and I asked if I could interrupt. And she said, sure, what do you need? And I said, we just got word that a tornado had hit a Boy Scout cap on, camp on the western side of the state. We're going to need a governor's proc for that one county. And she just looked at me and said, oh, good Lord. And Matt Unger put his hands down and put his face in his hands. Uh, the governor and, and General Dardis um, and I think one or two of our staff had been out on tour all day looking at damages across the state. They had just come back into the EOC. It was about, uh, about supper time. And uh, we got the word on, on the boys' ranch. Um, I remember the lieutenant governor saying, can anything absolutely else go wrong? We think we're through this, and now we have this. You could just see everybody got deflated. I mean, everybody had been working so hard with the floods and with the uh, tornado over Parkersburg, and now to get hit again, Everybody just, just couldn't hardly believe it. I mean, everybody was doing what they were doing, you know, responding to the, and doing the mission, uh, responding to the previous incidents from the flooding and the other tornadoes that had occurred. And I, and I don't recall if it was Dave Miller or Dave Miller or Joyce that basically said, everyone quiet, I need your attention right now. And then one of them announced, hey, we just had a tornado hit the little, Boy Scout camp, and you could hear a pin drop. It was after dealing with Parkersburg, after going through all the emotions with the flooding and then having that happen was, it was tough. I would say when we got that notification, it was hard on several fronts. First and foremost, as a parent, you think about your child going to camp and not coming home and the terror they have, may have felt during this incident for those who survived. Uh, and we had been at this for several weeks by then, so people were starting to get tired. And I remember standing in the EOC and crying that night because as a parent, sending your kid off to camp and they didn't come home, I can't imagine. So we actually called for a moment of silence in the state EOC that night, and that is the one time I remember it being absolutely quiet. Everybody was very somber in observing that moment of silence for that event and those children impacted. It was very impactful to me because it was personal that, you know, you always kind of think, well, if that could have been my boys or if that could have been my grandchildren or my neighbors or whatever. I have three sons that were all Boy Scouts at that time, had been to that Boy Scout ranch. Uh, the atmosphere was pretty somber. I mean, something, you know, when in my experience, when we worked in the EOC and we did something like a flood or something like that, you knew that destruction was happening you knew that you know people were being affected 
but it's an entirely different thing when a tornado goes through and, and you know takes the lives of those kids uh so yeah it was a pretty somber thing i think it, it kind of put a pall over the whole uh, a pall that wasn't there before over the whole response it was kind of hard to get back in the in the in the game of you know taking the phone calls from emergency managers because we were still flooding we still had severe storms we were still providing resources for flood control and flood management um, but the personal feelings that you had kind of came forward and um, it was a very emotional night for everybody incidents like that whether or not it's in parkersburg or whether or not it's the the Boy Scout camp that was that's impacted. It makes you think, you know, hey, this, you can relate, you know, people, people that have grandkids that have their own kids, you know, when, when things like that impact uh, children, it tugs at everyone. Whenever we have, have death and destruction, I think it bothers all of us. We take it personally. Um, I know one of the comments uh, when I was working as one of the governor's staff was, they were were interested in how I could stay so calm through a disaster event, and I said I'm not. So when things like the Boys Ranch hit, um, it caused me to break down a little bit, and I said these are the things that upset me. These are the things that make it personal. These are the things that that really hit home. That it could be anybody. It could be your own family. It it can happen anywhere. Um, and, and I think that's true for a number of the staff. And, you know, and the storm's still coming across the state. You know, it's, it's, it's not, it just didn't hit that county and die. It kept on trucking. And I remember that being, it was, I was really tired. You get past that. I think, I think I lost my marbles for about three minutes. I called my wife, yelled at my wife for a while on the phone, and then went back to work. The governor left immediately uh, with the commissioner of public safety. Uh, and... Uh, probably some others, I don't know, General Dardis may have gone, I, I can't remember. I remember that night being just really, really long. Um, you know, timing-wise, governor gets on the ground maybe there at 11. Well, the responders are so busy doing response stuff because they got a, a mass fatality scene. And so um, I remember we talked to Jim Saunders, who was DPS's PIO at that time, and said, hey, Jim, can you go over and do this on the ground? Because he'd had some experience on the ground doing it. And I actually ran into a part of that storm as I was headed west, broke the windshield out of my car on the way over, and it, I had to pull over and stop because you couldn't see on the interstate and the wind was blowing so hard, 10 o'clock, 10.30 before I got, finally got there. And it was, it was kind of chaotic from a media perspective because the response was still fresh, a lot of national media. Almost immediately after we heard the news about the Scout Ranch, our phones started ringing with reporters. And they were calling from all over the world. We had um, national news, CBS, NBC, NPR. We had uh, local news from all over the state. We had international media, Australia and Japan were calling. And we fielded media calls pretty much for two, three days, you know, wanting details, wanting specifics. And, uh, you know, you deal with that as it comes, you know, and you funnel that back to your, your PIOs and your your joint information folks and let them handle, you know, working that and, and giving those details out as they become available. Everybody that had a child there was rushing to the scene because they wanted to make sure their child was safe. I'd have done the same thing. So you got to contain that and not make the disaster even worse than it already is and expose people to risk. So from a communications perspective, it was, um, it was a pretty good undertaking to make sure people understood, okay, well, we need to have a, a location where parents can go, get information, make sure that their children, you know, check in their children or check out their children, make sure they're safe, make sure we have everybody accounted for. But one of the DCI uh, agents that deployed to that scene early on that lived in the area uh, really took charge of that, Mitch Mortvet, uh, and it, it impacted him profoundly. He really did um, uh, an amazing job with that part of it. I mean, he, he pretty much took charge of coordinating uh, things with the parents, and, and I think he had a lot of interaction. In fact, I'm not so sure he doesn't have to this day some communication and contact with um, the parents, some of the parents that lost a child in that, uh, in that disaster. As I was driving home that night, you know, it hit me what we had been talking about, because you don't have time, because you just have to do what you have to do in a situation like that. 
but it hit me what we had been talking about, and I cried. I feel emotional talking about it because you knew you were doing your job, but you know those four people had been killed, and that was difficult to handle. And I think also it was, you know, it was also a release from from the intense stress that you know we'd been feeling for days and weeks, you know, after the tornado and the fatalities there, and and um, the pressure of the work we were doing and the fatalities and the damage from the flooding. And I, I think it just, for me, that's, that's when it all came out. But people dug in and, and just kept going. I mean, you, you have to do what you have to do. You just can't stop because people are relying on you to get those resources that they need. So if you stop, the response stops. So yeah, you just have to keep going. Just pull up your big boy pants and just keep moving on. We're human after all, and we have feelings and we care, but in order to do our job, we have to figure out how to do that. But that, you know, that doesn't mean that it wasn't emotional here in the state EOC because it was. We all provided so much support to each other and I think that is what got us through that. And we all became closer. Uh, those kind of things bond people in a way that you would never get uh, in an ordinary situation.